Today in class, we are going to talk about job applications, the what, why, when, where, and how of job applications. This is from the course Career Preparedness, and it is Alabama State Standards number six from this class. Examine the employment process, including searching for a job, filling out a job application, writing a resume, developing and practicing interview skills, and completing required employment forms. And that's what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through this employment process of how to obtain a job. And there's many parts of it, so we're just going to cover the small part of job applications today. Within the learning targets, we have three. Number one, I'll explain what a job application is and why it is needed, so the purpose and the function. Number two, I will identify errors that need correction on a job application and number three I will fill out a job application correctly in order to prepare for the employment process. Before we jump into the lesson I just want to gauge what you guys know about job applications so if you'll just take a minute and read through these four questions I want you to answer them and then we're going to share them out. So at this point in the lesson, this is where I would have the students either write down the answers or they could type them into a comment box, depending on what kind of learning management system we were using. And then after I give them a minute to answer them, I would just give different opportunities to share them by either posting them into that box or clicking on their microphone and allowing them to talk them through as a class to serve as kind of like a formative discussion for where are we going with this lesson based on what they know. After conducting that formative assessment and gaining their prior knowledge, I would jump into the lesson. So the first thing we want to know is what is and why. So if we look up the dictionary definition, Webster says a form used in making a request. So basic knowledge definition is just something that you're going to fill out in order to obtain a job. And it lists your personal information, your work and your education history, and the skills that make you awesome. So this can be filled out in person or in line. Granted, we are living in a pandemic type world, so most companies are moving to an online portal to fill out applications, but I wanna prepare you for both in case you do ever run into a situation where you have to fill out an in-person paper one. And why would we use applications? Because they can use for so many things, such as applying for college, applying for a scholarship, or applying for a job. I want to cover just very quickly a couple of in-person tips if you're going to pick it up and it is a paper type application you always want to be prepared for an interview right when you walk in so you want to go in looking professional that means no shorts no flip-flops you want to go in there looking your best your khaki pants or your dress or your skirts or anything that makes you look like a professional because first impressions are important and if you walk in there to fill out a job application and a manager happens to be there their first impression is what they're going to remember about you so you want to make sure that your first impression is good now on to the how do you fill out the job application the most important thing is make sure you answer all the questions and be honest do not put stuff on there that is not true because they will follow up um, if there's something on the application that doesn't apply to you, like military service or trade school or something that you have not been a part of, then you just want to put not applicable or in slash A. You always, always, always want to make sure you check for spelling and grammar and punctuation because that will cause someone to have a bad first impression of you if you're spelling things wrong or having issues with punctuation and grammar. And if you're filling it out on paper, make sure you use blue or black ink because that just makes you look more professional than going in there with like a pink or a yellow or an orange fun colored pen that's not really viewed as professional. And then again, if you're filling it out on paper, you want to make sure that your handwriting is good. That way they can read it. Now that we know what an application is, we want to focus on the common parts of it so that when you're filling it out, you know how to correctly do that. So there are seven common parts listed here below. Your demographics, your availability, your criminal history and citizenship, your driving record, your education, your work experience, and your references. And we're going to go through each one of these to ensure that whether you're filling it out on paper or filling it out through the digital portal, you know what each one of these sections is and how to properly put the correct information into them. Demographics and availability is the first section that you're going to fill out on any type of application. So that starts with your personal information, such as your name, your address, your phone number, and your email. On your address, make sure you're putting it in correctly by using a full one. That includes the number, the road, the abbreviation, the city, state, and zip. And you can see an example of one listed on the slide. You want to make sure you have your phone number. That's something that they can call you and contact you at, so that's your phone number. And your email, you want to make sure it's professional. So no hot girl at Gmail or something that kind of sounds silly. You want to use something that makes you look good. So an example would be like your first or your last name, um, and then at Gmail or whatever um, online portal you're using for your email. You also are going to be 
required to give your age if you're under 18 because they want to know that you're meeting the child labor laws. So they have to um, have a certain amount of hours based on like what kind of age you are. So that's something they're going to ask you. And then they're just going to know when can you work? Can you work after school? Can you work on the weekends? So you want to make sure that you consider things like your sports or your family commitments or whatever keeps up your time to ensure that you're telling them that you can work at the time that you can. The next section that you may see on the application is your criminal history, citizenship, or driving record. So they want to know things like, in reference to your criminal history, is have you ever been convicted of a felony crime? It may ask for you to explain the situation and because some companies will not hire you if you do have a felony or you are a convicted felon. So you have to make sure that you research that information before you apply for the job if that's something that does apply, for you, apply to you. They also want to know your citizenship status. So you'll be required to show proof of this um, through your birth certificate, your social security card, your passport. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the certain forms that you have to fill out because the I-9 is required and that's where you will fill out that kind of information. If you're not a U.S. born citizen, then you're going to have to show documents to prove your status, such as a green card or a visa or something like that to ensure that you're legally allowed to work in the United States. And then some applications may have your driving record on it, especially if it's a job related to driving, like a truck driver or a delivery driver or something like that. They want to know, um, how do you have any ticket history? Do you have any wreck history? What kind of driver does your license say that you are to ensure that they're hiring somebody that's going to be safe and productive in the driving process? The next section that you might see on there is your education history. If you've already graduated college and you do not want to include your high school information at this point because it's kind of irrelevant to what they're looking for, they may ask you for the location or the name of your school that you went to. They might also ask you for your GPA, which is your grade point average, so that's your grade history. And a lot of reasons they, that they want to know this is because what kind of student you are is directly related to what kind of worker you're going to be. So if you were a hard worker in school, you're probably going to be a hard worker in the work place. Also, they may ask you your major or diploma type. So in high school, this is going to be standard versus advanced or honors. In college, this is more specific and there's a specific name for it. For example, if you were going into education, you may have got a bachelor's in English and language arts education. So that will be specific to the kind of degree that you have once you graduate college. So the next section is the work and job experience. And this is very important because they want to know what kind of jobs have you held before. So they will ask things like the company name, such as where did you work for? So this may be Wendy's or Walmart or Food Outlet. They're also going to ask the name of your supervisor, and that is the person that was in charge of you and can talk about what kind of worker you are. They may ask the location. Um, they're definitely going to ask your start date and your end date. Start date is when did you begin this job and end date is when did you finish it. So if you're still employed at this job, that's where you would just put present or current so that they know you're still working there. And then also they may ask your job title and your salary. So what were you called and how much money do you make? So for example, if you were a cashier, then your job title would have been cashier. And let's say you got paid $8 an hour, then that would be your hourly rate or your salary, which is how much money you make. Continuing in the work and job experience, the next thing they're going to ask is your duties or roles. So you're just going to briefly explain what you did using verbs. So for example, you may say something like, I washed dishes, I managed the cashier counter, I provided friendly customer service, I prepared food, whatever you did and you were responsible for in that role. And then the last section that you're going to see is a reason for leaving. And this may be for a job that you already left. So jobs that you were once at, but you are no longer at. The key to this is never be negative. Acceptable answers are like the hours didn't work out or I had better opportunities or lack of work. You never ever want to get on here and say something negative. Like I didn't like the people I work with or that that workplace wasn't good because that just makes you look unprofessional. So you want to keep it positive and upbeat. And last but not least, you're going to have a reference section. And a reference section is a list of people that can vouch for what kind of person you are. So they're going to be able to talk about your work qualities and your personal qualities um, that make you great for the job. Most employers will call these people, so you want to make sure that you're using people that can really say good things about you. And that does not include your family. These are people outside of your family. So you want to find people like family friends or teachers or coaches or principals. So at you guys' age, it's really good to build these relationships relationships right now so that you have people that can say, hey, I had them in class and they were a great student and worked very hard. And then you always want to ask permission first. Never put someone's name on there without talking to them first so that way they're not blindsided when the person calls them. 
point in the lesson, we would move into the activity section. And this is where the students are going to have the opportunity to participate in the gradual release of responsibility from the I do to the we do to the you do. So there'll be two formative activities and two summative activities in this lesson. The first one would be a correction activity, which would give them the opportunity to meet the learning target of identifying errors in an application. So I would provide them something like this, which is a sample job application that is filled out. And we will together start by me identifying some errors within it. So I'm looking for things like letters not capitalized or words spelled wrong or sections left out. And I would identify a couple of those for them to just refresh their brain on how an application should be filled out correctly. After that, I would have the opportunity for us to do one together. So I might get some students to chime in at this point. And this would be the opportunity for your advanced students to really chime in because they could identify quickly what some errors are and share it with the rest of the class. And then after we do that, I would do would release them to do a you do activity in which they would have to identify five errors on this paper. Um, now, depending on the level that the student is operating at, you can do this many different ways. You could have the advanced students be the first ones to share out after they identify the errors. You could also have them identify more errors um, so that they are being challenged a little bit. For students who are operating on a um, standard base level for their um, proficiency, they could just identify the five and then share them out. And then for students who are identifying under, they would not be required to share out. They might send those to me privately, um, the five things that they identify as wrong, and then we would just talk about them one-on-one -on -one to ensure that they didn't feel embarrassed or feel pushed to do something that they weren't comfortable with. They also might have the job application read to them or whatever goals are specifically in their IEP for reading or math comprehension to just ensure that we're meeting those like maybe extra time or just an assistive um, technology such as captioning that can read it to them or whatever is in their assistive um, requirements based on their IEP. After that, we would move into a practice application portion. And for this, I would have the students fill out a digital form um, completing a sample job application. So they um, would get on the computer and they would fill out um, using a link the sample application and have things like their name, their address, their job history, their education history, and things like that. In my classroom right now, I'm using Microsoft Teams, so it could be done through something like Microsoft Forms, but it would really just depend on the learning management system that we're using to identify what kind of form needed to be used. But this would give the opportunity for the students to practice um, filling out a job application to help them meet that learning target of being able to fill it out. So those would be the formative assessments, and you could do, again, um, different, differentiated opportunities based on the level of advancement. So the students with the um, higher level, they could have the opportunity to fill it out on their own. Students who are performing under might have a little bit more of the we do together time um, before they ever do that on their own. And then... Um, after that, we would move to the two summative assessments. So the summative assessment number one would be the students submitting a final application. So the way this would work is through a feedback loop in which the students submit that original practice application that was in the formative assessment section. And I would read through it and I would give them feedback saying, here's how you can make it better. Here's what you need to fix. Here's what's going to make you look more professional and make you more um, willing to be hired by the employer. And they could fix it and send it back to me and that would be their final summative assessment to figure out if they filled out the job application correctly. Um, for students who are performing on a higher level, you could just skip straight to this and skip the um, feedback loop and just have them directly fill it out because they may already understand the process. Um, and for students who are per uh, performing under, again, you could do whatever they need based on their um, IP goals. Um, so captioning, if they need it read to them, if they need a smaller version of it, if they need just whatever they need based on their reading and math goals. Um, and then the last section would be the quiz. And this would be a 
10 question quiz in which the students could answer questions such as what is a job application, what is its function, what are the common parts of it, and how do they fill it out correctly, and tips for filling it out correctly. And it would just ask some of the questions that we covered to ensure that they understand what it is. Um, through this, you want to make sure you're meeting the IEP goals by, again, you can use captioning, you can use uh, reading assistive, you can use teacher help, whatever they need to meet their goals.